Hi everyone, in this video we will make inventory system in Unity. Let's start. There are a few UIs that I have downloaded from the asset store before. And we'll use them to create inventory. There are also icons and prefabs of our object, books and pods. First, we start by creating a scroll view. The purpose of using a scroll view is that it scrolls up and down. Then we set the resolution of our canvas to 1920x1080. Next, let's set the size of our inventory. 600x750 seems fine. We'll not use scroll bars, so we delete them. Then, we increase the transparency of our inventory as a color and add a background image. We add a button to close our inventory and we position it in the upper right corner and assign the image. We drag our inventory object to the on click of the close button and set it set active to false. Later, we add an inventory button to open our inventory. We set the size, position and image of the button. And in order to open our inventory, drag the inventory to the on click of the button and set it set active to true. And now it's time to create our inventory object. For this, we create a button inside the content and set the size of the button and move the text inside a little. We are also increasing the size of the text object a little. And then we change the image of our inventory object and the color of the text. Then we add an image into our inventory item object. This image will display the items icon. We set its size and position. And finally, we add a button to our item object. With this button, we will be able to delete our object. We set the position and the size of the button. Then, we add an image to the button. We are also turning off the visibility of this button, because it won't always be active. Then, let's add another folder inside our prefab folder. And drag this item object into the folder. And our inventory object is ready now. Next, let's add a grid layout group to our content object. The reason we use this object is to arrange our objects properly and we we'll leave some space by adjusting the padding settings. We are setting the viewport settings to correct the image formed at the bottom of the inventory. And we add the content size feeder object for the scroll to work properly. This object provides a more comfortable use in scrolling. Then we drag our 3D objects to our scene. We have two portions and one book. We'll use them to increase health and experience. Make sure that there are colliders inside the objects. In order to define our objects, we create a scriptable object named item. If you don't know about scriptable object, I made a video about it before. You can watch it. It's very easy to use. First, we define our scriptable object. We write the necessary command to create this object and we inherit from scriptable object. Then we determine the properties of the item, such as ID, name, icon and value. Then we create a folder for our stuff. We'll keep the item data in this folder. So, create the red portion and choose its name, value, icon. We do the same with other items.
Then we create a script called item controller and we define a variable called item. We add this script to all our prefabs and assign the item data we have created. Then we create a script called Inventory Manager and create a game object to our scene and add it to it. First, we make our class a singleton. For this, we create a static inventory manager and name it instance. Then we call instance equals this in the evac method. It's ready for use. Then we create a list called items. We'll keep our items on the list. In order to add our items, we create a method called add. This method takes item value as a parameter. And by adding items.add in the method, we add our item to the list. And then we add a method called remove to delete our items. This method takes item as a parameter. We delete our items by doing items.remove in the method. Then we add a new script called item pickup and define the item variable in it. And we create a method named pickup. In this method, we'll add our items by accessing the inventory manager. We also use destroy command to destroy the added item. We'll call this method as soon as the mouse is clicked on the item. For this, we use the onMouseDown method. The important point here is make sure you have a collider inside your prefab object. Otherwise, this method will not work. Then we add the script to all our prefabs. And we are dragging the item data in the same way. Let's test it now. As you can see, when we click on the object, the object disappears and is added to the item list. Then we add two objects to see these added objects in inventory. These are item content and inventory item. Item content is where our items are filled. An inventory item is our 2D prefab item. Next, we create a method called list items. In it, we'll return the items list with for each and create the objects. While creating the objects, we access the item name text and the item icon image. We assign the name and icon of items. After that, we call this method with inventory button. and let's drag content and item to inventory manager. Let's test it now. It gave an error. Now let's look at the source of the error. We added the item name and item icon that we accessed while creating the inventory item. And let's try again. As you can see, the item's name and icon are now displayed. But there is one more problem. Items in inventory are multiplying. For this, we'll clean the inside of the item content before creating the items. And so the problem will be gone. And as you can see, items now fill properly. Now we'll use the toggle to activate the button of the items we want to delete. For this, we add a toggle in inventory. We change its position to the button left and enlarge it a little bit. Then we change the text and the background image. And finally, we color the tick icon. Then we create this toggle inside the inventory manager script 
and we create a method called enable items remove. If the toggle is active, we return all the objects in the item content with for each and activate the delete button of the item. If the toggle is not active, we turn off the delete button. After writing the code, we drag the toggle to its place in the inventory manager and in the onValueChange part of the toggle, we call the method we wrote. And as you can see, we can enable and disable the delete buttons. Then, we create a script called inventory item controller, perform the deletion, and add the script into our item prefab. So, create an item object and a method called remove item inside our script. In this method, we access the inventory manager and call the remove method. And then, we create our remove button variable. To set the item object, create a method called addItem. You may think that we'll use this method for setting purposes. In other words, we set the, our 3D object with the 3D inventory item in inventory. Then we go back to the inventory manager. Here we create an array called inventory items. Now we'll set this array. For this, we create a method called set inventory item. We set all childs that contain the inventory item controller class in the item content and set all the items in the list with the add item method that we added to the inventory item controller. And we call this method inside the list items method. Finally, if our enable remove toggle is active, we enable it to create the delete button actively. Then we go back to the inventory item controller script and add the destroy command into the remove item method. When we delete the item, both our list and the object itself will be deleted. We call the remove item method in the on click event of the delete button inside our item. Let's test it now. As you can see, when we delete the items, they are both deleted from the list and deleted from the inventory. That's all. Now it's time to use the item. For this, we'll add two items and text to the scene. This will represent health and experience. We set the size and position of the image, then set the background image. Finally, set the size and color of the text. Then we duplicate this image. Then we add a script called player. In order to use the script, we add a game object called player to the scene and drag the script we create into it. Then create health and x variables with integer value in the script. In order to show the value of these variables, we create their text. Next, create a method called increase health. And this method takes a parameter with an integer value. We sum values from the parameter and the health variable, then print this value to the text. Likewise, we create a method called increase x and apply the same things for x. And then we make this class a singleton. After that, we direct texts in their places. And open the item script to define the types of our items. We define an enum in it. As portion and book, we have a variety of types. Then we select the item data one by one and set their types.
Finally, we return to the inventory item controller script. Here we create a method called useItem. In here, we'll use the switch command in this method according to the item types. If the item's type is a portion, we'll call the increase health method in the player and we'll give the value of the item as a parameter inside the method. Likewise, if the item type is a book, we'll use the increase x method and give the item value to the parameter of the method. And inside this method, we'll call the remove item method because we need to delete the item after it's used. Finally, in the item prefab, we call the use item method on the buttons on click event. And we are updating the default values in the player. We are ready now, let's test it. As you can see, when we use the item, our health and x values increase and the items we use are deleted from the list. So that's it. If you like this video, please subscribe, also leave a comment. See you in the next video.